another, what we think is going to be a great show. It's, uh, it's all about transitioning to greatness. And we are going through the most interesting and exciting time probably that there has ever been on the face of this earth. But if you don't know you're going through it, it's a very scary time. And so for the last year, and especially for the last six months, I have been doing nonstop research about what in tarnation is going on in our country and not only our country, in the whole world. And of course, when the big questions come up, it's always about the virus. It's always about what has happened to our economy. What has happened to our constitutional rights? What has happened to the way we lived our lives for so many years? I know there's so many people saying, oh, I just want to go back to the old ways. This is too scary and I don't know what's going on. Well, if you're watching mainstream media, if you're watching television, if you're watching those stations for the news, you are going to be hearing information only that they, the owners of those stations, want you to hear. That's it. You're not going to learn about anything that they don't want you to know. It's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, when people say, oh, come on, uh, come on, Bruce, that's, uh, thank you, Brady, quiet, please. Uh, when people say to me, uh, come on, how can that be? Well, the way you know is there's never, ever been news that has been 100% against a person. Has anybody ever heard that before? Has anyone ever watched the news, read the newspapers, and seen 100% negative information about someone? It's never happened. The reason is that the owners of the newspapers, by the way, does anybody know who the owner of the Washington Post is? <laughs> yes, Shelley. Who's the owner? Bezos. Yes. Jeff Bezos bought the Washington Post. Why would Jeff Bezos buy the Washington Post? Isn't that interesting? It sure does give him the opportunity to influence a whole lot of people. And that's exactly what he's doing. That's just one example of how our mainstream media is being totally controlled by a few families and people in power. And those people in power and families have been in charge for thousands of years. Hard to believe, but let's just bring it down to something that we can wrap our hands around. Some people can wrap their hands around, it's been this way for 200 years. Some people can't wrap their hands around that either. So we certainly know that in the last 30, 40, or 50 years, things have changed dramatically. And there are things going on in the world that are just so hard to understand. I'll give you a for instance, 9-11 changed our lives 
changed our world, rocked our world. Okay. Now, I just want to share some information about 9-11 that I always wondered about, but for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what happened. For instance, when they show a jet airliner going into a building like that, and for years later, I hear from experts, a jet airliner cannot possibly do that. They cannot possibly do that, especially amateurs who were taking flying lessons here in South Florida. How did they do that? Or did they do that? The other day, someone sent me a video. And that video was about hundreds of kids sitting around a high school or gymnasium. And they're sitting there and all of a sudden out of nowhere, a whale comes up out of the floor and splashes everybody. Now, we all know that's not possible. We all know that. A whale cannot come out of a gymnasium floor and cause this huge splash and get everybody wet. So someone said to me, we have computer abilities to make that appear like it really happened. I said, oh, wow. Because I've been hearing about the airplanes going into the world trades as an illusion or some sort of computer generated. I said, oh, come on. You saw, the, you saw the airplane going right into the building. Come on. OK. We saw the airplane going into the building. And then how do you explain probably the world's strongest building. You don't make a hundred story building without it being so strong and being so sturdy. So for 20 years, I asked myself, a plane goes into the 90th floor and then the building crumples like a pile of dust. Makes no sense. But how did that airplane go into that building? Oh, wow. It never did. They showed the whale in this instance, a plane going into that building. That's the video that they offered on mainstream media. So it has to be correct, it has to be real. And then the building melts and collapses. Makes no sense to me. But that's what they wanted us to believe. The only way that could have happened is if they detonated thousands of pounds of dynamite, who knows how many pounds, and they took that building out by the foundation. They took the building out. And what were they hiding at the base of that building? What were they, what were they, why did they, why did they blow that up? Well, do your own research and you'll find out. So here they are showing a plane going into a building and then another plane going into the other building. And we believe it. Saw it on TV. 
And is my memory served me, but did also another building not hit by an airplane collapse? <clears throat> Hello? Yes, Shell? I just wanted to add that we saw the virtual reality of the planes hitting the buildings, but you don't know that the plane entered into the building completely, or it was like partly inside the building or partly outside the building, which we never get to see. And then if any parts of the airplane fell down on the floor, there was no, no record of any wreckage of the plane or, or any of that kind of a- uh, So, you know, that supports that it was just video graphics that they were introducing the same way they introduced the video graphics of that whale getting everybody wet in a gymnasium they did that also with the world trades and then the building building seven next to it going down for no reason at all so these are the kinds of questions that we have to ask. We can no longer be lazy about what we know or what we don't know. Because the more you learn, I'm gonna tell you this flat out, the more you learn, the happier you're gonna be. I was just talking to someone about this today. The people that are learning this information and are learning that there's rhymes and reasons why everything is happening. Because for all these years, why are these things happening? I used to ask anyone who had a brain on their shoulders, why would the powers that be want to take away all of our disposable income? They've been doing it since the 70s. Remember the first gasoline shortage remember that what started happening then instead of gasoline costing us 60 70 cents a gallon what happened then went up to what two three dollars whatever it went up to then well when you don't have any additional source of income and you're all of a sudden paying $3 a gallon and you're paying 30 or $40 for a fill up instead of five or $6. And you do that every week or every two weeks, that starts sucking the dollars out of your disposable income. Why would they want to take away our disposable income? I said, I kept saying, don't they want us to spend money in restaurants? Don't they want the economy to be okay? I found out the answer is no. And they're showing that today by trying to crash our economy worldwide, not just ours. Because when you cause an upset, People look for an answer, a response to that upset. And then all of a sudden, people step forward and say, we have an answer. We've been studying this virus for years and we have an answer, it's a vaccine. Okay, well, let's look at the facts. People have been studying the real numbers with this for quite a long time now, months. And if you go offline to different websites, not mainstream media, if you find, and, and if you want to find these websites, you just, all you have to do is contact me and I'll give you a whole bunch you can go to. But there's information out there that suggests that this virus that we're having is no different, no worse 
maybe perhaps better than any other one we've had in the last five, six years. I'm not saying it's not there. We have it every year. There's a virus that happens every year. And unfortunately, it's a terrible thing. People do die. Elderly are especially vulnerable. People who are ill, they compromise their health. Maybe they have uh, heart problems. Things, any kind of high blood pressure, cancer, whatever they have, if their immune system is already compromised, they're going to be more susceptible to a virus. Perfectly healthy people. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, tens of millions, hundreds of millions probably were in contact with this virus. And very few even knew it. Maybe they had a day where they felt a little sick, had a headache, sore throat. Boom, gone. Not everybody, but a whole lot of people, even if they had it, they didn't get sick. It's what happens every year. And they said that the numbers this year are lower than other numbers from other years. The funny thing is that what we're finding out, and Shelly has some interesting information. The funny thing is that we're finding out some people are getting busted finally for putting in information, incorrect information. They're including cancer patients, people coming in with other illnesses, pneumonia, whatever it is. If they came into the hospital and they had the unfortunate occasion to pass, it was automatically caused, the cause was the virus. And then if you do other research, you'll learn that hospitals were given incredible incentives to declare every illness that came into their hospital as COVID. Tremendous financial rewards were given out to hospitals for declaring deaths as COVID. You got a lot more money. Look it up yourself. Don't believe me? Look it up yourself. This is what this is all about. So Shelly came up with uh, some credible information that just came from uh, a friend of hers. And Shelly, you want to share what? Uh, oh, oh, I have it. But why don't you? Sh why don't you share it, uh, yeah. Shelly? What the 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 information you got from someone? A, a, a different dear friend of mine from the home where I used to live in, in Century Village, and she works in uh, nursing homes, and she helps uh, the elderly uh, to uh, play games and be happy and entertained, and this is her thing. She never talks politics with me, but this over here reached the point that she uh, needed to mention, and she sent me a uh, thing. So now that Trump has said hospitals are to report numbers to the White House instead of the CDC. Okay, hold on, folks. Hospitals are now required to send information to the White House because they don't trust what was going on with the CDC. As a matter of fact, they stopped financing the CDC. They stopped financing the WHO because of in all the inappropriateness going on. So continue, Shell. So the CDC is the Center for Disease Control for just uh, those that would like, and the WHO is the World Health Organization. 
So now they came out and said that they made a mistake once they had to report the results. They made a mistake in Florida and they've been counting pneumonia and flu as COVID, dropping their number from approximately 90,000 cases to 11,000 cases. How weird weird how that works, ain't it? And then on the bottom is scandemic. <laughs> So they labeled it as scandemic. So imagine, imagine, you know, when I, uh, I'm in communication with people from all around the world in the last few weeks, and every single one of those people said to me, are you okay? Oh my God, uh, I'm not coming to Florida. Florida must be, oh, I feel so bad for you. And I'm looking around and I'm saying, you know, my friends, and Shelly included, and Lynn, and all these, we've been having a pretty simple life here in Florida. I don't know any, I'm not saying it's not, I don't know anyone who has it, and nobody I know knows anyone that has it. We've been just fine getting together. Uh, this is a, a, a terrible situation. They think that the COVID is running wild in our state and that everybody is sick. It's an awful thing that's going on. So I said to myself, why? What's, what's going on in Florida? Why are they saying everyone in Florida is getting huge spike? And I realized that anyone that aligns themselves with the president and the governor of the state of Florida is Republican. And that's where the attack is coming from. They, this attack is coming through with no correct statistics. As Shelley just said, 90,000 to 10? It's an incredible thing going on. And I'm gonna tell you some other stories now that if you haven't heard these before, it can, make, it can really make your stomach sick. I have a question. Yes. Who is coming with all these numbers and with all these statistics? Is it the CDC? Is it the WHO? Where does it come? So what they're trying to do is to put a stop on those sources to have the correct sources, right? But who are the sources? So I, there's no way that I can answer that because who would ever put themselves out on a limb to say there's 90,000 cases when there's only 10? And then we believe in those numbers, like most of the people are believing these numbers and they're frightened beyond wits. My children are asking me, how are you? Things are terrible in Florida, what's going on? And I say, I don't know, the restaurants are open, the beaches are open. Where do I go to find out how bad it is? I don't know. Yeah, Maybe so it's, it's all made up and it has to come from the CDC. And I believe that there's powers that be up above that are twisting and turning everything to get a reaction. And that reaction is to get everyone to beg for a vaccine an untested vaccine, which the President of the United States has done a great job of working with the public to kind of expose the, the WHO and the CDC by definancing them because of their poor understanding of the virus and their poor reporting of the virus. So I'm going to say it's probably the CDC because well, who else would dare to make up such horrible, uh, false information? So I have a friend. She uh, was so scared, so petrified, and this is exactly what they want you to do. They want you to be the powers that be, want you to be scared and petrified. So what do they want you to do? They want you to go get tested. Now, once you go get tested, and that's why they're saying we're spiking, because people in Florida are going to get tested, and boom, you're going to get 
more results, positive results. Now, I've heard from scientists everywhere that if you've had a flu or a virus in the last few years, or if you've had a cold in the last few years, there's gonna be something in your system that's gonna set off a positive result. Nothing to do with this year's COVID, nothing. If you've had a flu or a virus in the last several years, there's still something in you that's gonna set off a positive response. Now, I had someone to go get a test. She waited, out. there was such a line. She waited, she filled out the papers. She's waiting and she's waiting and the line is going so slow. She said, ah, the heck with this, I'm getting out of here. A few days later, she gets a letter in the mail. Your tests have come back positive. Your tests have come back positive. She never took the test. What is going on? And there are several other stories of false positives. What is going on? We don't have all the answers now, but we're finding out little by little what is going on. So there's other things I want to share with you. Oh, by the way, talked to a lady online at the post office the other day, and we were talking about the masks. Oh, the masks. When you talk to scientists, by the way, I don't even want to say the guy's last name, but it starts with F. Months ago, he said, there's no need for these masks. They don't do anything. And then all of a sudden, no doubt, at the urging of someone up above, all of a sudden, everybody has to have a mask. Now, I'm not saying people are sick. I'm not saying everyone should not be wearing a mask. But I am saying this. I'm listening to the doctors and the scientists that are not influenced by certain people. And those people say, the only people that should be wearing masks are sick people, so they don't spread it to others. And if anyone wants to wear a mask, knock yourself out. But there's no way we should be forced to wear a mask that's gonna cut off the quality of our oxygen. Watching a video the other day, there was a scientist and he was breathing and he said, we're supposed to be breathing between 20 and 21% oxygen. He took the test, breathe in, 20, 21% oxygen, boom, right on the button. Then he puts a mask on left the mask on for, I don't even think it was a minute. He takes his tube, puts it underneath the mask, puts it into his mouth. He starts taking breaths. All of a sudden, an alarm goes off in the machine that he was testing with. What was that alarm? Lack of oxygen. It was only registering 17% oxygen. And if we go through long periods of 17% oxygen, we are gonna get ill. So that was another test that I said. And then the next day, you'll see something in the news that says, no, oh, masks are fine. Don't believe that stuff, masks are fine. And I'm, and that's what they do. They introduce information to counter what has come out against their plan. By the way, we may have talked about this before. 
Does anybody know where the term conspiracy theorists or conspiracy theory comes from? The source. I'll tell you. The CIA, I believe in the 60s, when they found out that people were researching what they were doing, that was countercultural, that was against our best interest, that was taking away our rights, they coined the term conspiracy theorists to embarrass, intimidate, and cause self-doubt to any free and independent thinker that was not believing the line of information that the CIA wanted out there in the world. You're a conspiracy theorist. If you don't believe what we're doing, you've got to be nuts. They did it to embarrass us, belittle us, in front of our friends and family and whoever we talk to about our independent and free thinking ideas. So Rachel Rose wrote, I want to know what people can do who are being forced to wear a mask and being fined if not wearing one. These are the new rules, especially in Miami and Broward counties. They have to file suits or something to protect that freedom. This is total insanity. The only thing that I could think about doing until the most powerful person in the world completely comes down on these people that are manipulating us still, the only thing we can do is write letters to our politicians. They need to hear from us because the people who are controlling things, they still are. And for some reason, they're still able to put across this false information. And this is hurting us terribly. I just read yesterday where Palm Beach County, we're gonna be forced to wear masks for another month. And it's our job to email the governor, email the congressmen, the senators in your state, in this state, and say to them, they are doing something contrary to our constitutional rights to have free abilities to breathe. It's part of our constitution to be given the rights to breathe properly. So we are in a pickle of a situation right now, but I do guarantee you one thing, things are changing big time. The problem is all the good things are happening, guess what? You're not going to hear it on mainstream media, MSM. You're not gonna hear it. Why? Because they would be reporting against themselves. They don't want this president in there because this president is hell bent to knock them off their power positions. And he's doing it, absolutely doing it. Are you gonna hear about it if you're watching mainstream television? No way. You know, I love it when I say to people, you're not watching mainstream media because I can tell their fears. I can tell they're just reading back to me. They're showing me, they're telling me what they're hearing on television. So I say to them, I know they are. You're not watching mainstream media, are you? Not really. But I do watch every once in a while to find out what's going on. Oh, my God. So they go to mainstream media 
who has their own private agenda to find out what's going on. Talk about having one foot here and one foot there, mass confusion and chaos. Mass confusion and chaos. And that's what the, these powers want. They want us to be confused. They want us to be separated. They want us to be separated by the mask. They made it a law to not be able to go to church. They made it a law not to be able to go to temple. They don't want us talking to each other. They don't want us comparing our notes about what is going on. They want to separate us. So as long as you stay in your houses, separate from everybody, they win. And guess what? If you stay in your house and don't go in the sun, you're going to get ill. You're not going to get the vitamin D that you need to keep you healthy. They know this. When they tell you to stay home, they know this. They know you're going to get ill if you don't go out. It's up to us to take this information that's coming at us and saying, what in tarnation are, is going on here? Okay? So, there's a lot of other things I want to talk about. Hey, uh, Shell, did, uh, did you have a, a, a question uh, uh, something you wanted to bring up other than what you already have? Um, well, you know, the question was, how do you deal nicely uh, with the issue of the masks? You know, that uh, 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 there, there are so many people that come to me that they tell me stories about going to a to a store and uh, and then uh, the people you're required to wear a mask in the store and there are people that object to it and they don't want to wear a mask so then the uh, employee of the store gets very upset that they're not following the rules and it's following the rules now the mask became a rule thing and people are not asking questions about the health thing and almost comes to represent if you wear a mask your surrendering is a symbol of surrender to the insanity that is going on on one side because the people that need to wear masks, I don't know if they're asking the questions, is it protecting me? Do I want to be protected? Do I want to protect the others? And be, uh, you know, in, in compassion or in uh, courtesy, you know, to show courtesy for the rules that people impose. So now the rules, you know, you begin little by little and then it becomes more insane and more insane until you finally find that your civil rights got taken away because you were capitulating a little bit with this and a little bit with that. And how do you deal little by little, you know? Yep. Do you remember what happened after 9-11? Do you remember our, how much of our rights were taken away after 9-11? That's why they did it. Yeah. It you, took me a long time to figure out. But I, that I, allowed them to scare us so bad that they uh, filed all these, I don't know what the names were, but they started taking away big time our was it, constitutional rights. Was it what? Was it then that it started that when you wanted to fly, you had to take your shoes off, you had to take oh, your sure. off, right? Like all the, the uh, screening in, uh, in uh, schools and screening in uh, uh, travel and screaming in uh, public offices. Taking and, away our rights, taking yeah. away our rights, and they're doing it. Yeah. We've got to turn it around. We will turn it around, I guarantee you. Neil says he saw an older guy coming out of Publix this morning and saw he grabbed his mask gasping for air, okay? This is what's happening. It's actually making people sick, much more than it's helping. You know, months ago, when they didn't know what was going on, they knew what was going on. When they didn't know what was going on, they said, hey, you can get this uh, uh, sitting on a park bench. Ah, uh, this thing flies around in the air and uh, you can get it 10, 20 feet away. 
And by the way, social distancing was created in a, in a science project by a high school person, I think about 30, 40 years ago. It was never used. Uh, and the funny thing is, look what they did to the state of Florida with the distancing and the masks. Everybody's distancing. Nobody's coming near me when I walk down the street. If I'm walking my dog, they're walking the other way. No one's come near me. No one's come near my dog. I haven't been near anyone except for my close friends in months. And look what happened in the state of Florida. Spiking cases of COVID spiking. Absolute craziness. Yes, Shell. I just wanted to uh, bring in a little bit of science to the why are they saying that is unhealthy for us? And I think it's uh, people understand that we inhale oxygen and we exhale the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide are all the toxicity that we expel from our body. So now when we have it all covered here, we are inhaling our carbon dioxide. We are not inhaling the oxygen from outside. We're inhaling the toxicity that we give out so for i feel terrible for all the workers for all the waiters waitresses and waiters and for uh, the medical people that they have to wear the eight hours uh, of work or whatever hour time that they spend at work so for us to go to the store go in the store and go out of the store is not terrible right. for the people that have to stay during work hours with that mask guarantee you they're going to be sick and then they're going to say you see how dangerous this whole thing is yes exactly you know i i went into a store today i won't mention the name because it really kind of pissed me off uh i i had my mask on covered my, my my mouth please raise your please raise your mask sir and then i was waiting online and someone said to me please go over to that pink spot over there and stand over there sir i'm like oh my god what in tarnation is going on? Uh, this, is, this is an abomination of our rights, and we have to start recognizing it. We have to start being aware, and we have to start questioning exactly what's going on. When I hear information that suicides and cancer and other illnesses that happen every single year Deaths that happen every single year. We're punching up these numbers of deaths. When I start, when I was still watching television and watching the news, and I saw a scoreboard about how many deaths and how many illnesses, I said, this is nuts. This can't be right. And I stopped watching the news that day. And from that day forward, I have felt so much better. So much better. So, uh, I have a question. Yes. I have a question. So, being that we hear uh, also that in many cities are riots and people are rebelling, but these are different kind of a riots. They're not. I, I don't know. It's almost like they are putting the uh, in in the front of what happens when you riot. But here, people that are outraged with the abuses and with the constitutional rights being taken away, and you want to rebel, or you want to say, I don't want to go along with all this. What do we do? How can we respond in an intelligent and in a kind way and in a positive way that is not rioting, that is not terrible, neg terribly negative? I'd like to ask that. Any ideas how to, from your experiences with expressing your truth and being true to yourself, how do we address the situation in a decent, educated way? We are being controlled right now. Yeah. And it's very reminiscent of Germany and uh, communist China. Very. And they have it they have people so trained that uh if i say something someone's going to turn me in 
What does that sound like to you? When, when, when did that happen in the world when you said something that was counter to what was being put out by the government and people turned you in? Whoa. Okay, that's what's going on. It's not going to go on much longer, I promise you. But that's what's going on now. The people that are watching the news, and, and listen, when I was teaching school, I was so exhausted when I came home. So let's make that the guy working in the supermarket. When he says to me, Star, put that mask on. That guy working in that supermarket for six, eight, 10 hours. What do you think he does when he goes home? He gets something to eat and does what? Puts on the news. And he's filled with this brainwashing information that just makes him angry and afraid. So when these people come at me in the store, I know it's because they're watching the news. And I know that they're being forced by the state, which is unbelievable, forced by the state to make everyone wear a mask. Incredible. But that's what's happening. I want to tell you another story. I started telling you, I don't know if I told you the rest of the story, I was standing online, or I started telling you the story at the post office the other day. I don't know what we were talking, we're talking about masks and we're talking about, you know, is this, can you believe this is really happening? She said to me, I sent my son up to sleepaway camp a few weeks ago with 600 other kids, 600. No viruses, nobody testing positive, zero, and 600 kids. What does that tell you? And here's, I'm going to tell you a story now. My wife just told me the other day. People are so afraid. People are so twisted and out of control. My wife told me her friend needed to go to the bathroom the other day. They were, they were talking outside and she needed to go, can I use your bathroom? No. What do you mean no? You cannot go to the house. And my, my, my wife's friend had to go out in the garden because she would not let her in the house. Imagine that. So those are the things I say those things because I want you to think for yourself. I want you to get on a path of researching really what's going on, okay. not what the TV is telling you, okay? Bruce, and I have, yes, Shell. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I, don't be sorry. Uh, I, I also wanted to uh, uh, point a, a thought, a concept. We hear over and over in our lives, history repeats itself, right? How yes. often do we hear? So a lot of the things that are being presented to us now by the media, by whoever, the CDC, whoever, it's not the first virus that we have been presented, it's the last virus that we have been presented. We had worse viruses than this one, like you said, but they decided history repeats itself and let's try something new into this. Let's try masks and social distancing to see how people will re react and will respond to that. So you brought up the, uh, the issue of the Second World War and the derogations and somebody tattle on, tattling on you because they're so petrified and so worried. I mean, there is a parallel here of the tactics of the Second World War. I mean, we're not living the Second World War. We're not in it in the same format as the Second World War has been. It's a different format, but we are experiencing the same fear. And the fear is history repeats itself. So for the professional psychologist and therapist, they know how to create that kind of a mindset. So, you know, it's nothing new 
Nothing new. And we are applying it to the people, and the people that are not asking questions are following it, fa falling, not following, falling into that trap. And I think it is a time of waking up for the people to wake up. Okay, how many times do I need to repeat the same thing until I decide to go into a different direction? So how creative can we become that we don't fall into the fear and into the tactics of fear? Because in reality, that's not what's actually going on. There's something else. There's a different program and a different narrative that is going on that we have to figure out what it is to figure out how do we respond to that? Not how do we react to that, but how do we respond? So the beauty of this whole thing, and now we're going to go into a different, completely different direction. The beauty of this is, is to teach us to tune into ourselves, to acknowledge how powerful we are as spiritual beings, and how together, as more and more people wake up, and stop following what they're being told within reason. I don't want you to get arrested. But this is all going to change. But this whole thing is about empowering yourself and believing in yourself. And when doubts come up, look into them. Look into them. Don't just accept the narrative that you see on TV. Now, there have been things going on behind the scenes that have been unbelievable, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now that there is a movement that's been going on for the last 25 or 30 years. And the people, I'll just call them white knights for now because there's been a lot of good people in the background that have wanted to take this power away from these elites. But they had to wait for the perfect leader, the perfect president of the United States. You're going to hear, as depressing as it was for me, you're going to hear it was not the last president. The secrets that they gave away to China, horrendous. Why do you think? Why do you think the Chinese are so powerful now? They were given secrets and stuff, and the presidents before them were under the control of certain people. These white knights had to wait for the, the person who was not beholden to anyone to make this happen. And you're not going to hear about all these things because mainstream media is not going to tell you. But the guy in charge right now is incredibly brilliant. And I'm gonna give you one example that you haven't heard about. That is the most incredible change that's happened in the world in a hundred years. And when I tell you this, you're gonna say, oh wow, how could we not have heard about this? Have you all ever heard of the Fed? Well, we've heard of it. Does anybody really know anything about it? Do you know, is it part of our government? Do we know what they do or how they do it? We don't, never have. Big mystery. Well, for the last almost 100 years, it was owned and controlled by leading families. It made them trillions of dollars every year, manipulating stock markets, manipulating economies, charging 29% interest, crazy stuff. They were, you can, if you control the money, you control the world. Everybody knows that. Well, our businessman is the first businessman to be the president, maybe ever. This businessman figured out something that no one else could ever figure out, nor did they want to do, because it would be taking away 
huge source of money to the people that are paying their bills. Our president took the Fed, remember, a trillion dollar moneymaker, multi-trillion dollar moneymaker, and without a war, without a battle, simply annexed the Fed into United States Treasury. What? He took this multi-trillion dollar entity that was making financing everything that the uh, people were doing, simply took it away. It's now part of the U.S. Treasury. Unbelievable. When you really think about that, when you research this, and you, it sinks in that the Fed is no longer in charge of this unknown entity, but is now part of our government. This is mind boggling. And there are things going on now. The president is doing such smart things. He is loading up the Fed with so much debt that it's going to crash. And that brings up one of the great things that's happening right now. Right now. All you have to do is ask around. Have you heard of the word jubilee? In the past, for hundreds of years, every 50 years, everybody's debt was forgiven. Nothing too terribly crazy or unheard of. Every 50 years, you were in debt to someone, in debt to someone, in debt to someone. And finally, after 50 years, that debt was excused. That's happening now. Don't have to believe me. Research it yourself. Look at all the articles where student debts are being forgiven. Not everyone's, they're not just gonna give, forgive everyone's debt instantly, but for debt is being forgiven. College loans are being forgiven. And very soon, mark my words, your credit card, if it hasn't already happened, debt will be forgiven. And I'm gonna blow your mind now, mortgage debt is going to be forgiven. Oh, come on, that is ridiculous. How can that happen? Well, we've uncovered that the banking system that we've been living under for the last 200 years, certainly the last 100, certainly the last 50, has been an illegal one. And every loan out there from this illegal banking system is an improper and illegal loan. And they are going to be forgiven. Not because there's a nice guy out there saying, oh, let's just forgive them. No, 29% interest rates on credit cards, 25%. That used to be called thievery. Now it's common. Credit card debts are going to be forgiven. It's going to be a part of this new change that's happening already. The Fed, forgiven debts. There's going to be huge changes in our government. There are tens of thousands of arrests going on right now. You've heard about a lot of them. People have been doing some really bad things to be powerful, rich, famous. A lot of people were willing to do just about anything and they did do anything and they never thought they'd get caught. 
been happening for decades. Been happening in show business, banking, get away with anything. If you have the money, if you get caught, you buy them off. There's something going on now, saving it for another show. People are getting caught. They have all the videos, all the facts, all the figures. There's no doubt. Massive arrests are going on. Massive arrests are going on. And you're hearing about some of them. When you hear about people dying from cancer, suicides, good chance that uh, they've chosen that path rather than to be exposed by what they were doing. It's happening everywhere. And months ago, I heard about major arrests in a foreign country of very, very rich people. These people didn't have thousands in their banks. They didn't have tens of thousands. They didn't have hundreds of thousands. They didn't have millions. They didn't have billions. They had multi-trillions in their offshore bank accounts, Swiss bank accounts, hidden away money, multi-trillions. These people have been arrested. Gang members all across the world have been arrested and they have nothing but cash. Big, big, big amounts of cash. Warehouses full of cash. They're being arrested. There was an executive order. One of the executive orders by the president of this country said, if you are arrested and you did a heinous crime, terrible crime, if you're arrested, two things. In the past, when people were arrested because of this crime, there was an outside agency, part of the world court, that would sequester this criminal. They take him out of the country. They say, we'll deal with them. We'll take care of it. I don't think it ever happened because the crimes that they were committing were okay with this group. There was an executive order by our president said two things. If someone is arrested for a terrible crime, they cannot be taken from our country. They must serve their court cases right here. Can't be rescued and taken out of the country. Number two, and this is a world changer. This is a world changer. If you were arrested, your assets can and will be seized and taken by the country where you live. In our case, United States Treasury. They've been arresting tens of thousands of people and they have recovered hundreds of trillions of dollars. Offshore banks, Swiss banks, whatever it is. That money is going to be part of this change, and there's going to be a redistribution of wealth. It started here in this country with the stimulus check in a very minor way. And interesting how $2 trillion was all of a sudden found. Another show for that wasn't just found. It was taken from the assets of someone who was arrested, people that were arrested and given to us. That's just the beginning. It's going to happen on a monthly basis for a lot more than that. Think about $100 trillion divided up into the number of people in the world. There's enough for everyone. It's enough for everyone. This is going to happen. 
it's going to be part of this massive change. It's going to happen. And sooner than later, when the uh, president says the fourth quarter is going to be incredible and the first quarter of next year is going to be off the charts, that's because we're going to all have plenty of money to do exactly what we want to do. If we don't want to work, we don't work. It's already happening a little bit now with the unemployment. People are getting 275 plus 600. It's a lot of money for the average everyday person to get a week. So it's not such a stretch what I'm saying. This is the way it's gonna be. Things are gonna change and our leadership, there's gonna be things happening with our leadership that is gonna be incredible. People are gonna come from the dead and reappear. Have you heard? Who's been around? I'm not gonna say it right now, but I've also seen a video of someone who supposedly died to get away from the torments of the powers that be. And days after he supposedly died, there's a video of him in a mask going on TV, sounding exactly like the person who died a few days ago. Go, I'll talk more about that, but that's a prediction. People are going to come out of the woodwork when the powers that be are knocked off even more. You want more proof that the powers that be are having a tough time now? The oil industry, industry has crashed. Remember gasoline was, less than, less than, was in the minus per barrel, and now it's a reasonable $2? The president didn't want to kill the oil industry, so we brought it back up to $40 a barrel or $2 a gallon. We can handle $2 a gallon. But it crashed. Big money earner crashed. How about what happened a day or two ago? The president issued another executive order. And that executive order said, you know that $1,500 in pharmaceuticals a month you've been spending on uh, insulin? You know that, that you've been spending $1,500 a month every month for years and years and years? No more, 35 a month. And all other pharmaceuticals where people in other countries are paying $25 instead of $2,000? $25 here from now on. He's meeting with all the leaders of the pharmaceuticals on Tuesday who will meet with him. So you've got the oil industry crashing. They took the Fed away. Okay, oil industry, pharmaceuticals is going to be cut off at the knees now for charging these horrendous amounts of money for, to sick people. The banking system, as we know it, is no longer there. Have you been hearing about banks that are closing up for a week at a time? It's because they're going from one system to another. They've crashed. And when they could no longer take money in from gangs, when loans have been forgiven, they're crashing. All of the big financial avenues are, are, going are already down. Need any more proof? You shouldn't. But because you're not seeing it on mainstream media, not quite believable. It's happening. So if anyone else has a question, I was told CNN is now in the hands of light workers. That's what I heard. But here's what's going to happen. 
the credit card debt, we're going to be excused. It's just not going to happen all at once. But certain banks have already done it. Certain banks are doing it. Certain credit cards are doing it. Uh, you could call them up. I'm not sure. You have to research this. Okay. An another prediction I have to make is that there will be a time very soon where our mainstream media and internet are going to be blacked out. We're going to have to do without them for anywhere from three days to a week because the owners are going to be removed from the mainstream media. And what you're going to get in the meantime is the emergency broadcast system. So remember I said that. Prepare for not having internet. Go to the library, get some books. The banking system has already changed to the quantum system. And the banks can no longer, are no longer going to be run by criminals and people who have just squeezed us dry. You want to know how different things are? You remember 2008 when there was a crash and people were suffering terribly? The president at the time, what did he do? He gave billions to the banks and nothing to the people, nothing. Billions to the banks. You want to know the difference between then and now? This president is giving trillions to people, putting out loans that are going to be forgiven so people can stay in business and keep people on their payrolls. Smart. Normal presidents just don't have this smartness, don't have this capacity. And another huge thing, thank you, Shelley. The dollar is going through a huge change. It is no longer called the fiat dollar backed by nothing. There's going to be a new set of dollars. They're going to be part of the treasury and they're going to be gold and silver and platinum backed. Instead of just printing money, we're going to have all new, all new money. Wait till you see it. It's absolutely beautiful. If you want to know what it looks like, research it. Type in new treasury notes and you'll see JFK on the $20 bill. Fantastic changes going on. Incredible changes going on. You just have to hang in there and be willing to see this all through. Gold is now 1,900 per ounce. Thank you, Shelley. I, uh, silver was $11 per ounce in March. I, all I kept hearing was buy silver, buy gold, buy silver, buy gold. I never did this before. I never bought gold or, or silver before. So I bought some silver a month ago at 18. It's now 23. It's going to go a lot higher. It's going to go a lot higher. You're going to see some incredible changes. They're already happening. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Uh, this video is going to go out into the masses for months and years to come to explain exactly what's going on. Imagine you're in the forefront. You're in the forefront of these understanding these massive changes. Once you understand these massive changes, you're going to be so happy. But the people that are in the dark and that are asleep, they are miserable because the TV is making them miserable and they think that this world is up a bad creek. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you for your kind words. So thank you very much, everybody.